Well, good day. So we're in the midst of the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs. My Edmonton Oilers got knocked out in the first round. Chicago didn't even make it. And Pittsburgh got knocked out in the first round as well. But let's talk about these teams a little bit more because they are both featured in the 1995 Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, Sudden Death, which takes place during Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. So first off, as usual, let's recap the movie and then we'll flap our gums about it some more after. So, alright, let's go! Buffalo! Alright, so let's get into this. So we have Darren McCord, and he is the fire inspector at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. And he gets two tickets to the hockey game, so he takes his two kids to it. Emily and Taylor. Not just any hockey game, game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals between the Pittsburgh Penguins and Chicago Blackhawks. Also attending the game is the Vice President of the United States. So it's a big to-do. And because the Vice President is there, well, a bunch of terrorists show up too. They are led by Joshua Foss. Him and his crew infiltrate every aspect of stadium departments, basically, from security to kitchen staff to event staff, etc. They do everything to get into the building so they can get to the vice president who is watching the game in the owner's suite. So the terrorists murder their way into the owner's suite so they can get to the vice president, which they do and they secure the room. Kevin Stevens scores for the Penguins for a 1-0 lead. So Foss wants $1.7 billion of frozen bank accounts sent to his bank accounts around the world or else. If he doesn't get the money throughout the game, well then people in that room will die. And he'll start killing people in the suite after every period if the money isn't being moved. And if he's not getting the money at the end of the game, well, he'll just blow up the whole arena. Profound! So the stakes are pretty high. Dirk Graham scores for Chicago to tie the game. So Penguin's mascot, Iceberg, has been compromised by the terrorists as well. And Iceberg gets a hold of Emily and circumstantially is brought to the owner's suite and is one of the hostages now. McCord ain't liking that situation. He meets up with Iceberg and they have a freaking awesome fight, man. It's like when Peter Griffin fought the giant chicken. Man, epic. Boom, boom, right? Left hook, right hook, roundhouse. Man, like, actually, it's a pretty good fight. And McCord winds up killing the terrorist in the Iceberg costume. He also interrogates a compromised security guard, so now he knows what's going on. Jeff Shantz scores for Chicago to take a 2-1 lead. McCord makes contact with the outside to Secret Service agent Hallmark. And he's like, yeah, yeah, man, I need some help. I'm going to start disarming these bombs, man, so he can't blow the place up. Hallmark sneaks into the building somehow and uh, teams up with McCord. Thomas Sandstrom ties the game up for Pittsburgh, but treachery abounds. As we find out, Hallmark is actually working with Foss, and he winds up getting killed by McCord. On top of that, Ron Francis scores for the Penguins, so they're up 3-2. to two. McCord also contacts Foss and is like, yeah man, come and get me. So Foss sends some guys after him. McCord's on the run. He doesn't know where to run or hide, he just runs around. Brent Sutter ties the game for Chicago, and after that goal, Tolliver is not feeling good. He's had a fever the whole time, but he's a starting goalie, so he went to play anyway. And he's like, you know what? I'm actually feeling really horrible. I need to leave the game, and he does, which <laughs> I don't think any athlete would really do this. If you feel that horribly bad, you wouldn't have even started in the game. If they took him out due to an injury or something, that would make more sense. But nonetheless, he's out of the game. A backup goalie, Ken Reggett, goes in to, you know, to look after things. And Bernie Nichols scores on him to take a 4-3 Chicago lead. And Tolliver goes to the dressing room. And so does McCord. So he's like, where am I going to hide? Where can they not get me? He's like, I know. The Pittsburgh Penguins bench on the ice. He gets Tolliver's gear, you know, hops on the ice and goes to the bench. Thinks he can hide there. But the coach is like, hey, are you feeling better? Because you're a starting goal. And if you're feeling better, get in the back in the game. So McCord's like, ah, crap, I guess I gotta. It is convenient earlier in the movie that they mentioned McCord played minor pro hockey in Canada as a goaltender, so he's got some experience with that. Might be a bit rusty. But he does make a beauty save on a partial breakaway from Tony Amante. And all is good, but he's like, man, I gotta get the heck off the ice. I gotta stop these bombs. Which is like... 
why did you go on the ice in the first place if you know you had to disarm all these bombs? Like, hmm. So he's got to get out of the game. So he punches Christian Rutu right in the face. Bit of a fight ensues. He gets a game misconduct. He's out. Gan. And back in the dressing room, he's got to fight some of the terrorists in full goalie gear. It's not easy to do that. Like head high kicks with goalie gear on, man. Good luck. So he kills these two terrorists. The locker room is shot up. And in the last seconds of the third period, Luke Robitaille scores on Ed Belfort to tie the game. We're going to overtime. Sudden death overtime, huh? So Foss is kind of choked. He's like, I was going to blow up the building at this point if I didn't get the money, but the game's going to overtime. <laughs> you know, I guess we'll hang out here some more. So now you got to think logically. There are two dead bodies in the Pittsburgh Penguins locker room. The locker room shot up. And nobody seems to notice that. Like, they're that incredibly focused on the game. Like, man, that is dedication. Eyes on the prize, baby. So during overtime, McCord is fighting some guys on the roof of the Civic Center. He opens up their partially retractable roof, which, again, nobody notices. They only start to notice when McCord kicks a terrorist off the roof and he lands on the scoreboard, making everything spark like crazy. So it's like, holy crap, what's going on? McCord ziplines down to the owner's box, blows a hole open in it so he can get in there. So at that point, finally everyone notices what's going on. Everybody leaves the building, including the players. Vice president is saved. Foss takes off with Emily. McCord saves her. Foss tries to escape in a helicopter, but McCord kills the pilots, making the helicopter slowly go down through the retractable roof to the ice surface. Explosions, boom, Foss is dead. Everyone is saved, except for the people who died. And that's where the movie ends. Wait, that's where, it, that's where it ends? We don't know who won the Stanley Cup. What's going on? Any end credit scene to explain? Nothing? No? Ah, <sighs> I guess we'll never know. <laughs> that was pretty good. And I'm sure like everybody else, we liked it the first time we saw it when it was called Die Hard. So of course, Die Hard with Bruce Willis was a pretty big success. And you have seen some Die Hard clones kind of come out afterwards. Like this one, uh, Under Siege with Steven Seagal, just, just to name a couple, where there is some function going on, some terrorists break in to do something, and only one person can stop the whole thing. This movie was so much of a diehard clone that they actually tried to get Bruce Willis to play the character of Darren McCord. But he turned it down. So did Sylvester Stallone. I don't think I could see Stallone doing this one. And Arnold Schwarzenegger also turned it down. <laughs> like, could you imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger playing goal for the Penguins? Actually, yeah, I could, and that would be, like, really awesome. It would have to be, like, a comedy, kind of a parody for that to work, and I think it would be great. And this movie was originally supposed to be a comedy parody of action movies until it was turned a bit more serious and then tried to be, like, a real action movie. One of the comedy elements was the McCord character fighting against the mascot of the team, and that was probably the only scene that was actually kept towards the serious side of the movie. But there are some things in here that are really still pretty comedic. Like, you need quite the suspension of disbelief to really believe a lot of the things that happen in here. Which I guess is a 90s action movie to a T. <laughs> Even with a lot of careful planning to get into the suite where the vice president was, is quite a bit of a stretch. And then even then, you'd have to plan for quite a bit of a time. When did you know that the vice president was going to show up at that game? Like, if that was announced at the very beginning of the season, you could probably make a really good plan. It was probably announced, like, a week earlier, a couple days earlier, and how quickly can you get a plan together? But again, it's a 90s action movie. You're not supposed to think too much about that stuff. After they finished writing this one and producing it, they were going to work towards a sequel to this movie to be released in 1997. But that scenario was kind of a moot point because this movie did not do well in the box office and any sequels were scrapped. Or were they? So fast forward to 2020, there was a sequel slash remake, I guess however you want to put it, which was called Welcome to Sudden Death. And in that one, the setting took place at a basketball game. And it took on the intention of the original Sudden Death script, where it was more of a comedy parody. And for a hockey connection, it was filmed in Winnipeg, Manitoba at the MTS Center, which is home to the Winnipeg Jets of the NHL and the Manitoba Moose of the 
the American Hockey League. So let's go see what else we can dig up about this movie. So if the movie came out in 1995, then well, this would be the 1995 Stanley Cup Finals. In real life, the 95 Cup Finals featured the New Jersey Devils sweeping the Detroit Red Wings. Now to compare the movie to reality, Pittsburgh did make the playoffs. They lost in the conference semifinals to New Jersey in five games. Chicago also made the playoffs, but they lost in the conference finals to Detroit in five games as well. Also in 95, well, the Edmonton Oilers didn't make the playoffs, which was sad for me, but you know, we did next year. All right. Chicago and Pittsburgh did meet in the Stanley Cup finals. That was in 1992 with Pittsburgh sweeping Chicago in four games. Seeing as sudden death movie wasn't that far removed from that Stanley Cup finals, a lot of players mentioned in the movie were playing playing in that Stanley Cup final. So Pittsburgh did win a total of five Stanley Cups throughout their history, 91, 92, 2009, 2016, and 17. Chicago won six Stanley Cups throughout their history, 1934, 1938, 1961, 2010, 2013, and 2015. So seeing as both teams were winning Stanley Cups around the same years in the 2010s, hey, they were pretty darn close to another matchup. Oh well. So, as I have lamented earlier, we did not see who won the Stanley Cup in this movie. Of course, the game was ended under incredible circumstances. So what would the National Hockey League do in this situation? Well, there was a Stanley Cup final game that was stopped early and the NHL did use some policies to continue the series. So it was the 1988 Stanley Cup final Edmonton Oilers versus Boston Bruins in the old Boston Gardens for game four. The game was tied 3-3 with like 3 minutes and 23 seconds left in the second period before a transformer basically blew up and knocked out power in the building. Like the lights were out, they were struggling to keep the lights back on, and after a long time it was deemed, yeah, we can't continue the game today, like there's no guarantee the lights are gonna stay on. So game 4 was suspended and replayed in its entirety and the scores were reset 0-0 and was played at the next location. Game 5 would have been back in Edmonton so they're like yeah let's just go back to Edmonton and replay game 4. And so they did which of course the Oilers won 6-3 and swept the Bruins in four and a half games. So with sudden death that same policy would be in place. You obviously can't finish the game at the Pittsburgh Civic Center obviously because of all the security issues and of course the damage to the building and the playing surface so what they would do would suspend that game even though it was an overtime suspend the game go back to Chicago and replay game seven there starting from scratch zero zero but in this movie we didn't see it happen so but that is what would have happened so yeah again one of the things I really loved about this movie was how authentic as possible they made the game. First off, they're playing in Pittsburgh Penguins' real home, the Civic Arena, you know, the house that Mario Lemieux built. A lot of hockey movies will reference NHL teams, but this one, they, they went all the way in. They got two NHL teams, the Pittsburgh Penguins, Chicago Blackhawks. Although the original script called for the Penguins playing against the Los Angeles Kings, but it was changed to Chicago. There were NHL players who did make cameos in this movie as well. Most notably, Luke Robitaille. And in a blink and miss it scene here and there, you also had Marcus Nasland, Bernie Nichols, and allegedly Ken Reggett. The main farm team affiliate for the Pittsburgh Penguins at the time was the Cleveland Lumberjacks of the International Hockey League, and that entire roster played the Chicago Blackhawks in this movie. So Cleveland Lumberjack Ian Moran, he portrayed Chris Chelios, and he eventually went on to play almost 500 games in the NHL after this. Also in real life, Pittsburgh Penguins goaltender Tom Barrasso was asked to play, you know, the goalie in the movie himself. Right? But he turned it down. So they had to create the Brad Tolliver character to kind of replace him. But they still wanted it to be as close as possible. So Tolliver wore Tom Barrasso's number 35 and Tom Barrasso let him use his actual equipment. So the same pads, the same hockey mask, so it looks as close as possible. And even everything kind of surrounding the outskirts of the game. The anthem singer, like in real life, Jeff Jimerson sung the national anthems for the Penguins games. And there he was in the movie. 
movie, the public address announcer, John Barbero, same thing, they brought him into the movie. And of course, the Penguin's play-by-play -play announcer, Mike Lang, with all of his wacky signature expressions, that was there, and his broadcast partner, Paul Steigerwald, was, was there as well. So they really went all in to make this as authentic as possible. Like, that is amazing. Hi, Marks. Kudos. During the game, you also had a bunch of players in the action that you kind of seen, but they were mentioned, such as Kevin Stevens, Ron Francis, Dirk Graham, Tony Amonte, Ed Belfour, Thomas Sandstrom, Jeff Shantz, just to name a few, plus the ones I've already mentioned, plus all the players on the ice, you know, who you seen but you didn't hear from during the game like Joe Murphy, John Cullen, etc. So many to name. And we can't forget the Pittsburgh Penguins mascot Iceberg who was referred to as Icy in this one. And it is funny to note that uh, Penguins star at the time Yermer Jaeger was not too happy with the character who portrayed him in the movie because his character was on the ice for three Chicago Blackhawk goals putting him at a minus three and he's like yeah I'm a little better defensively than that. <laughs> and it's hard to fathom at, at the time of this recording, Yermer Jagger is still playing hockey at 49 years old. He went back to Czech Republic to play in the Czech Extra Liga. The team that he owns, Retiri Kladno. I probably really butchered that name, but sorry, I don't speak Czech. So yeah, man, good on him. And of course, in this movie, we had an unnamed vice president, which looked nothing like the vice president at the time, which was, of course, Al Gore. <laughs> at least they got the hockey stuff, right? Right on, and there you go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video. And if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed in this, you know, feel free to do so or anything else you know just to say hi that's cool too and other than that you know uh, have a great day thanks